Hi everybody, well, you may well have heard of the new modding framework for Cyberpunk 2077 and in this video I'm going to talk about how it relates to ordinary users uh, and players of Cyberpunk 2077 on PC, because unfortunately it's only for PC at the moment, um, when it comes to downloading and using mods, rather than looking at it from the point of actually a modder creating mods, because that's not really my thing. I'll put links to everything I talk about in the description below this video, starting off with um, CD Projekt Red's description of what Cyberpunk uh, 2077 Red mod is. Um, but basically, if you want to use Red Mod, you'll want to go over to your launcher, whether that be GOG or Steam, uh, or I guess, I don't know if it's on the Epic Store. And I guess in Steam, it'll probably be in the library, um, and then maybe under Tools, or it might be under Cyberpunk as part of it, the DLC. But on GOG, um, on the um, Galaxy launcher, you click on, go to Cyberpunk, click on Manage Installation, click on Configure, and there'll be a DLC option. And then you click on Cyberpunk 2077 Red Mod, and that will then start downloading it. Um, and then in this section here under Features, you want to enable mods, and you can change the executable to the Red Pre Launcher.exe, so it will kind of launch with mods. Now, Red Mod is not a replacement for what we have already, so it's not a replacement for Nexus mods. Um, the the Nexus uh, the Vortex, the Nexus Manager, uh, Nexus Mod Manager, it's not a replacement for manually installing stuff. It's just another way of doing it. So it's all running in parallel. And I guess one of the most important things I've got to say is just because a mod is available for Cyberpunk 2077, just because it says it's Red Mod compatible, doesn't mean that it'll work. And does it, doesn't mean it won't have problems working with other mods as well, that there won't be... Um, disagreements between mods uh, that stops them working and stops your game working and stop makes it crashing as well so always remember that when you're playing around with mods whether it be cyberpunk 2077 or anything any like daisy or anything like that at some point the mods will break your version of the game and you'll probably have to repair the game so i'm going to show you how to do that quickly as well so if you need to repair your version of cyberpunk 2077 click on manage installation and click on verify and repair then you go to downloads and kind of it will show you what's going on. Now, if something is uh, red mod compatible, it should tell you in its description wherever you find the mod. So most mods now, they're over on um, nexusmods.com, aren't, aren't they? But they may well be on GitHub and, and things like that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll put a link to this search, hopefully in the description below this video, which is a collection of mods that include the red mod tag which should mean they're red mod compatible. When something says it's red mod compatible, what that means is that it should come with a special JSON file that tells um, Cyberpunk uh, what to do with it. But what will kind of happen is that it will probably end up in this, this folder here. So this is my Cyberpunk installation folder on my C drive. So C, Program Files, x86, GOG Galaxy Games, and then Cyberpunk. And then we have this mods folder. And this is where we put the mods sometimes it all depends on each mod um, and red mod will recognize these um, and you will it will start them up um, sometimes you get an option to configure them and sometimes as well in your settings uh, in uh, cyberpunk when you get into it there'll be a section that says mods and then you can go in there and you, you can change some settings okay so other things to consider though is it is very important when you're going to be doing these things that you check the description of the mod and the installation um, of it because often you you think that um, something will be simple but it's actually not so let's have a look at some examples let's have a look so for example let's have a look at better apartment views so if we look at this one permissions and credits description now i want like a more complicated one realistic car crashes here we go. So realistic car crashes. This has got the red mod tag. Should be red mod um, compatible. However, um, it, oh, it needs the red mod. Okay, that's a bad example. Um, let's have a look at vanilla plus lighting overhaul. Let's have a look. No, that doesn't need any requirements. I will find one in a little bit that needs it. 
sound detection randomizer requirements. Here we go. So this is a, this is a great example. This one. So detection sounds randomizer. If we go into this one, um, it's tagged with red mod uh, there. However, you don't just install it um, in the way they tell us because it still has requirements in the same way that lots of other mods have requirements. So Nexus requirements, native settings UI, um, cyber engine tweaks, and red mod DLC for main mod files to, to work. So the red mod DLC we can have installed. And what it's saying is you would also need cyber engine tweaks. Um, and if you're using it with Nexus, you might want to use native settings UI. Now where we're using it with red mod, so in theory, we just need the cyber engine tweaks um, installed and the red mod DLC installed. Well, the red mod DLC, I've just showed you to do that. The cyber engine tweaks, um, you're going to get from uh, Nexus mods or GitHub. Um, and the thing I would suggest, though, is you're probably going to be using Vortex to manage these other mods as well. So we're kind of using everything together. Um, also have a really good read of the instructions. So, for example, for this one, it says install cyber engine tweaks, install the red mod DLC, install the native settings UI. So you need all three of them and it get, you know, they're all available. So that one's available from Nexus mods, red mod DLC, you're going to get from your launcher and Nexus and in native settings UI, you're going to get from Nexus mods. Then it tells you download the mod under files tab, extract a bin and mods folder into the game's root directory. So with this one, you're not loading it into that mods folder I just told you about. It's not going in there, it's going in here. So that's very important to, to note that. So let's go back to another one as well. So let's have a look at Edge Redlands Locations Editions. So let's have a look. Permissions and credits. How to install. Drag and drop the archives into archive PC slash mod. Or if you're using the red mod version, drop the folder into Cyberpunk 2077 mods. Okay, so if we go to the file section for this one, what we'll see is there's two versions. There's the archive version, which really means using the Nexus mods version of it. Uh, the, sorry, the um, Vortex version of it, that version. And then there's the red mod version. So what we do, so we can do a manual download of it. Like so. It's quite a large mod, 105 megabytes. I've got quite a slow internet connection, so let's just wait for this to download. And then what we're going to do, it will be in our downloads on our computer, and then we're going to copy it over um, to our mods folder. And then we're ready, we're at halfway down, 57 megabytes. Almost there. Bup, bup, bup. Right, we're almost there. Five seconds left. Now. Okay. Right, so that's now downloaded. So that's going to be in my download section. There it is. Um, what is it anyway? What one is this one? This is the locations edition, isn't it? So show in folder. Right, so there we go. So we're going to copy that. And then we're going to go over to Cyberpunk 2077. They said put it in the mods folder, didn't they? So let's go into the mods folder. Let's paste this and let's extract this here and see what it does. There we go, so it's put it straight in the correct place. So that means that when we start the uh, uh, Cyberpunk, it's gonna recognize that, we can delete that now, we don't need that anymore. And then it's gonna add those re uh, locations, as long as there's nothing else we need to do. So you read through the descriptions, right, so it seems all simple, doesn't it? There's the images of these new locations that it adds. From the uh, Edge Runner cartoon. And then you can even ha make sure, you know, have a look in the post section and, and see if there's any other um, descriptions about it. Now, what I expect to see is that as Red Mod progresses, it should be hopefully become a little bit more comprehensive in the way that you install mods. And we'll also see mod creators either over on Nexus Mods or on GitHub or in other places making it simpler to install their mods as well in the fact that you'll probably just plunk them into that um, folder and I think we'll also probably see better integration with uh, Vortex as well the mod manager so there we go hopefully that hasn't been too confusing hopefully I kind of explain the fact that you know red mod in cyberpunk 2077 is running in parallel with vortex mod manager or manually installing mods um, 
and uh, it's not that complicated but my big caveat for all of this is that when you are installing things in parallel with parallel systems so we've got vortex on one side we've got red mod we've got manual install mod you're really going to have to stay on top of updating your mods making sure they're all updated and looking out for those uh, clashes that you have between mods those compatibility problems where you start up cyberpunk and something for example doesn't seem to be working properly so that's when you probably have to run it without mods um, and also when you do run cyberpunk 2077 without mods from the launcher that doesn't affect your vortex mods um, or your manually installed mods that are, are, are running as well okay so hopefully that's been useful put your questions comments down below if you enjoyed the video hit like if you want to see more the same press subscribe and i will of course see you again soon